Absolutely. So I'm going to use a bigger brush this time, one of my bigger mop brushes. And starting with some yellow, then I'm going to go into some orange. And oh, that's a happy accident. There's a little bit of red in there, too. And I'm going to make sure I blend. Now there's still that crisp line, so I'm gonna backtrack with some yellow without washing my brush and going over that line. Look how it disappears. I love it. Using a bigger brush makes it a lot easier to blend. Blending is a technique that takes quite a bit of practice, so make sure you're using enough paint on your brush and not washing it and having all of the colors on your brush at the same time really helps. So look, I'm, oh, I'm going in with some lighter blue up here at the top and blending it in. What do you think? Is this a sunrise or a sunset? I kind of think it could be both, but maybe a sunrise this time. So I'm going to have my pouncer sun again. I'm going to make another omelet with my bright yellow, my dark yellow, and my white, putting it all on the sponge like that. And then figure out where you want to put it. I'm going to put it off to the side this time, smushing it down like a stamp. Make sure you twist to get the bubbles out and pull up. Ooh, I like that one too. I like the shadow at the top. Now I'm going to take a clean, bigger mop brush and go in with some dark green. Almost looks black to some people, but it's a really, really dark shade, kind of like your undertoning. And don't forget your fan brush. I'm going to take the dark green as well and do my trees. Just make sure you turn it on its side so it's the thin way and tap, tap, tap. Very, very lightly will give you thin trees all the way across your picture. And don't forget your toothpick for any chunks of green that got too thick. Make sure you're just pulling up with the toothpick. You don't need any paint out. You're just scratching off some of the paint to show some yellow through it that gives you tree trunks. Super easy. Just make sure you do it before the paint dries or you're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> then I'm going back in with a smaller brush and black since it's still dark out, whether it's a sunrise or sunset, I still have to plant the bottom of my trees and blend it in. I'm just blending it in with dark green instead of blue because this is the grass version. Now grass is interesting. I'm going to take my fan brush and with light green and dark green, I'm just going to start very lightly pulling up up, 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 up. You always want to start at the bottom of your grass and pull up. You never want to go from the sky down like a lot of people think because if you do that, your grass is going to look upside down. It's always that upward motion that gives you those wisps. And make sure you're using both a dark green and a light green because that gives you shading and highlighting all at the same time. Super easy. Now I'm going to take a sea sponge. This is a larger sea sponge and take some pops of pink and red and boop, boop, boop. There are some uh, wildflowers and don't forget some white. Look at that, that gives you a pop as well. And as a final touch, I use a Sharpie and draw some birds. I don't use paint brushes because what that does sometimes is people get really thick brush strokes. And there is the wildflower version of my sunset on the lake. So if you did miss the uh, sunset on the lake tutorial, I will link it in the description, but there are many different ways to do this painting variation. Have fun.